Get teach other here. Get teach other via. Teach these. Get teach theirs. I'm Dr. Leonardo Guida and I'm the senior shark campaigner at the Australian Marine Conservation Society. Sharks are a threat to almost everything in the ocean. What could possibly be a threat to sharks? Sharks are facing enormous pressure to just to stay alive. Uh, their biggest threat is overfishing for their fins and their meat. And sharks are usually fished in, in three main ways. Mm -hmm. One, on long lines. So these can be lines that extend for over a kilometer with hundreds to thousands of hooks dangling from them. We've got fishing nets. Again, they can stretch over a kilometer long and just sit in the water, almost invisible to a shark. And we've also got trawls. So these are like big scoops that you know, scoop from under the water on the ground or even in the middle of the water and sweep up anything in its path. Mm -hmm. The other threat sharks face is also climate change. And with climate change comes warming temperatures and the need to perhaps move to different environments to accommodate for cooler water or warmer water. Sharks are without a doubt the angriest, toothiest, bloodiest, uh, rapiest, most criminal looking fish in the whole ocean, um, Leo. So surely Less of them is a good thing. Sharks unfortunately get a bad PR rap, which can make it a bit tricky to get people to want to save them. But one of the things that we have to be aware of is the language we use when we talk about sharks. Now typically people, when people hear of sharks or they read about sharks, it's monsters, man-eaters, lurking, rogue, hunting. Mm -hmm. When in fact, sharks cruise, uh, they swim. They're big, beautiful fish, and under the water, I've had the pleasure of diving with them. They're just so graceful and majestic. And not just that, but sharks aren't always these big, black-eyed, toothy monsters that you, know, you, you read in the newspapers or see in the movies. There are different kinds of sharks. You have sharks that don't really even have teeth as such. So there's a shark that lives in Southern Australia called the gummy shark and it actually has plates that they use for grinding. And when you look at it, it looks like gums. Uh, you also have the epaulette shark, which lives in the Great Barrier Reef. And this is a shark that's about, about yay big, and it can actually walk on its fins. And what it does is, is when the tide goes out in the reef pools, it can actually hop from pool to pool. So sharks are incredibly diverse. They look different, they move differently, they behave differently and we shouldn't all paint them all with the one brush. Okay, so what you're trying to say is that we no longer have to just worry about sharks in the ocean, but we've got to now start thinking about how sharks are going to come up on the land. And no, 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 no. Well. I wouldn't worry about them coming onto land to bite us. As I said, the epaulette shark's only this big, and believe me, it wants to get back in the water as soon as possible because breathing the air without the water, it's not an easy job. Yeah, look, not too convinced that I'm not going to get eaten in my sleep by a land shark. So I might just double my security around my yard. But that aside, um, what is the best thing that we can do to help the shark? Humans are the biggest threat to sharks. We kill at least 63 million of them per year around the world. But we're also their greatest hope. At the Australian Marine Conservation Society, I help lead the Shark Champions campaign. And we're looking for more shark champions to join the cause. And at Shark Champions, you can learn everything you need to know about sharks. It's a one-stop shop for how to save sharks and where you can go to help save them. So I'd love it if you'd come join us at sharkchampions.org.au. Oh, and seagulls are more than welcome. Oh, sick. Get teach over here. Get teach over there. Click on the link. Click here to share. Teach the